Hi everyone, this is Stella Grisant from Whoopa, and today we are having an exciting Google Hangout with Vanessa Von Edwards. She is a dynamo when it comes to decoding human behavior. She's a published author, she has a, a column on Huffington Post, she can tell you when someone's lying. Um, she is just like a master human behavior investigator. And I am so excited um, that she's joining us today. I have to say, Vanessa, and just for our viewers, the first time I discovered Vanessa was on Udemy.com. Udemy, um, some of you may know, I have an online course called The Science of Happiness, Hacks and Skills to Flourish on Udemy. And I've only been on a few months, but I have to say, and it's been really busy, and there's tons of great courses on Udemy, but Vanessa's is the only one that I've bought so far because <laughs> it's just so fascinating, and I've learned things like the second I turned on the class. So I was like, I have to bring Vanessa on and share this goodness so that we can all make sure that we're walking our talk um, and not just talking talk. Um, <laughs> Because um, one of the things that's really cool that you may not know is that only 93% 90, of our communication is nonverbal. So, um, so let's, yeah, let's dig in. Vanessa, hi, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here today. Thank you, thank you. So um, a lot of our viewers, a lot of people who come to WUPA, they come from both a professional interest in how to accelerate and flourish themselves, how to flourish at work, but also how to uh, flourish personally. And I, I'd love to know, let's just start on the professional front, what's one thing that people overlook when they're trying to succeed? Sure. Actually, most, most of the science that we're going to be talking about today, and I, I take a science-based approach. I'm a real geek in that way. I love looking at the studies. Um, most of the science that we're talking about could be applied in both business environments and romantic situations. So that's the good thing. I think that the biggest thing that people overlook is that they go into a pitch or they go into an interview or a meeting and they prepare what they're going to say. They think about the bullets, they think about you know, how they're going to convince the other person, all about how th what they're going to say, but they very rarely think about how they want to say it. Um, yes. And that's because we're not really taught about that. You know, in school, we're taught technical skills for our jobs. We're taught how to interview, like how to answer questions. Um, but we're never taught you know, how to hold our body to inspire confidence. Um, how to be charismatic non-verbally, how to read someone's face. And the funny thing is, because as you said, 93% of our communication is non-verbal, and the studies vary, but at the very least, the very least, 60% of our communication is non-verbal. So that's yeah. still the majority. Um, we miss all that ability. And I always say, it's like walking into a meeting blindfolded if you don't know how to read body language. Because not only is it about your body language, it's also about reading the other person. You know, if you're in a meeting, you want to see, do they trust you? Do they believe you? Where are their hang-ups? How can you get them to connect with you more? Yes. So I think mean, that's, that's overlooked, and it's not our fault. We're just not taught it in school. Oh, totally. I mean, I have to say, as I'm talking with you, I'm a little like, hmm, is everything I'm doing right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry. You're good. Because, <laughs> you know, so often so much is, uh, like you said, yeah, we sometimes we're just unaware of, of how, how we're coming off. So I'm excited for you to help us kind of gain that awareness and, um, and yes, talk to us about being successful. So I'm just looking at my questions here. Oh, here's a question for you. So lots of times in order for us to grow um, our, our businesses or grow our professional networks, we go out to events and we try to meet new people. Mm -hmm. So I know you have some great tips on networking. Can you share some of those? Sure. So first of all, if you are nervous about networking, you are not alone. It makes people typically incredibly nervous, and so don't worry. You are you're not you're not the only one who's in there. Um, I think that networking is actually a great opportunity to showcase yourself and also read others. And there's a couple of really easy things that you can do if you go into a networking event. So just first, very basically. Um, I find that in a room, in a networking event room, I always go for the sweet spot in the room. For example, if you Ooh. walk in, it's very intimidating, especially if you're an introvert. Um, most of my students are introverts. So I say don't, don't walk in in the hardest place and, and try to you know, walk in and you, you kind of 
it's like, you, who do I talk to? You kind of like scramble and then you like make a beeline for the drinks and you make a beeline for the food and then you run to the bathroom because you're not quite sure where to go. Um, so I find that the best place to stand, typically there's a place to get drinks, is actually right as people are leaving the, the bar or the, where to get the drink. And the reason for that is because usually people want to drink to get sort of lubricated, right, <laughs> to, right away. So yes. they, once they've gotten their drink, people are usually like their heart rate lowers and they're ready to, to reach out. And instead of the food bar, a lot of people stand at the food place, but then people's hands are full and all they want to do is eat. <laughs> So this is you, so genius. I just have to say, <laughs> this is so genius. I've never thought about networking this way. I yeah. love it. Yeah, because you want to get people at their peak connection time. Yes. It's not right when they walk in the room because they haven't gotten a feel for the settings. Their heart rate is very high. It's not right after they got their food because all they want to do is eat and their saliva glands are going and their blood is rushing to their digestive system, so they're not very good at making conversation. But after they have a drink is a really good time to do it. So I actually all like walk in and I'll look at the bar and I'll see where are people kind of peeling off the bar. It's usually on either side of the bar um, yes. or one side if it's in a corner. And I'll go and I'll get my drink and then I'll plant myself about three or four feet from there. And it's a really easy way to then turn to someone and be like, oh, you know, how's the wine? Or, you know, had to get my drink before I started networking. And it's like, it's so easy to make conversation with people. So, oh. um, <laughs> and by the way, my definition of nonverbal is not just body language. It's, it's things like that, reading a room um, beyond words. So that's one really easy thing you can do at a networking event. <laughs> really useful. And you know, a lot of times, like this is, this information is not about being manipulative or, um, it's just about understanding human behavior yeah. and how to optimize your opportunity to make a real connection. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of people don't think about uh, our human interactions as something to actually think about and improve upon and that there's strategies and there's tools you can use to optimize. optimize. There you yes. go. <laughs> yeah. So what we just We're had. We're on minds meld. <laughs> exactly. There's something called brain coupling, which uh -huh. is like when you're connecting with someone, you're like making eye contact, which we kind of are through the Google Hangout. Yeah. Um, we are like literally our brains anticipate one another's thoughts. That's called so, that's called brain coupling. Brain coupling, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna write it down because I like it. <laughs> yeah, and it happens. It happens actually um, with moments of it's called love. Um, mm -hmm. Barbara Fredrickson talks about this. She's a researcher on positive emotion, and she talks about love the way our body understands love, which is about an authentic, warm connection with other human beings. And when we have that, when we say we're on the same wavelength, we literally are. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool. So, Wait, I, in fact, that's actually the perfect opportunity. We, I know that yeah. we talked about um, before the call mirroring a little bit. Yeah. Um, and it, it's very, I, I hadn't heard the term brain coupling before, but it's, it's a very interesting cognitive way to talk about the physical version, which is mirroring. And I think yeah. um, this also is a great tip for networking as well as romance. Um, so a lot of people have heard, if you haven't, that Mirroring is what we do with someone when we're really feeling in tune. And there was a study that was done that looked at best friends. They had, it's a very sweet study actually, they had best friends come into the lab and the researchers filmed the best friends talking about a story. And then they filmed other friends for shorter and longer lengths. So for example, they had friends that have been friends for 20 years. They had friends that uh -huh. been friends for two months. They had friends that been friends for two weeks. They had strangers talk to each other about similar topics and they realized that the longer that people had been friends, mm -hmm. the more mirroring they did to each other totally subconsciously. So for example, you'd have best friends talking and they would both lean in together at the same time. They would both use the same nods. They would both use the same head tilt. They would use the same, and it even went down to blink rate, heart rate, and sweat rate. So even, wow. I know, it's crazy. Like it wasn't just, you know, what they could see. It was actually down to the our chemistry when we're really feeling someone. So the reason why this is important is first, when you're on a date and you're just like, this is a good date, 
I mean, people say, oh, that could be chemical. It's also about mirroring, how much you're subconsciously mirroring the other person or they're mirroring you. You can also do this to help encourage relationship. And I never, I never want to use it as a gimmick, so you don't want to like, you know, right. um, purposely mirror them in, in an awkward way to be manipulative. But what I will do is to get them to relax. So if I'm around someone who's nervous, like if I'm working with a client or I'm um, on, I'm not, I don't date anymore, I'm married, but when I used to date, um, if I could feel their nerves, what I would do is I would literally hold my body as they held their body. I would make my words the way that they use their words. So if I had a slow mm. talker, I would slow down my speech. If I had a fast talker, I would speed up with my speech. Mm. And I just did that to make them feel comfortable. And it's amazing. When you do that, you'll see someone be like, oh. It's because they literally feel heard and understood. So you can actually yes. do that non-verbally, especially if you're a manager or if you're on an interview, to mirror just to get someone to, to show them, you know, mm. we're on the same page. It's a great non-verbal tip you can do. Um, and it also brings up empathy. So, mm. um, you know, I, I'm a huge proponent of encouraging empathy. And it's very hard to say to yourself, I'm going to be more empathetic this year. Like, it's not, a, it's not really a New Year's resolution that you can make. Yeah. But you can do this non-verbally through mirroring. So there's something called the facial feedback hypothesis. And forgive me if I'm getting really sciencey here. I I'll love try. it. I love okay. it. Keep okay. Going. Okay. So the facial feedback hypothesis is when um, you make a face and you feel the emotion. So for example, they mm -hmm. mostly thought that when you feel an emotion like sadness, you make a sad facial expression. And a sad facial expression is when you pull your corners together of your eyebrows and you pull mm -hmm. your mouth into a frown. It kind of looks like that. Mm -hmm. So that's a sad micro expression. So when you feel sad, you make that facial expression. But the interesting part about the facial feedback hypothesis is when you make that face, you actually begin to feel sad. Right. So right now, if you're watching, if you pull your eyebrows down and together and, and pull your, yep, exactly, and pull your lips down, you'll actually begin to start to feel sort of depressed and sad. Yeah. It's a very weird thing that we can, it's, <sighs> I know that's weird. Don't do it for too long. I should have picked happiness. <laughs> Why did I pick yeah. sadness? That's weird. Um, so uh, because of that, that actually helps us. That's the, the nonverbal basis for empathy. Yes. So when you're with someone, you subconsciously begin to mirror their facial expressions. And the reason for that is because you literally are supposed to feel as they feel. So yes. we do this to feel as other person feels. So I also will mirror just to see how they feel in their body. Like if someone makes a facial expression, I was with someone the other day and, and they were making this weird kind of like pulled facial expression and I, I didn't know what it meant. So I, I, I copied it to see how, what they were feeling and I began to feel kind of um, like defensive and uptight. Ah. And I was like, okay, I, th I think that's probably what they're feeling. And so I just took a step back and I was like, you know, let's sort of shoot the shit for a while. You know, like I started, we started talking about the weekend, about weather, and they like visibly relaxed. So wow. that's also a, a nonverbal thing that you can do. Romance or business it works both ways. Yes. Well, they're so parallel in so yeah. many ways. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> so yes, I love that. I love that. Um, so what you have a class on Udemy that's called the human lie detector uh -huh. and I have not taken that yet but I definitely plan to talk to us about how do you know if someone is lying sure so um, this is there's a very deep robust research science on human lie detection so basically if you think of a polygraph okay most people when they think of lie detection they think of a polygraph machine mm -hmm. a polygraph machine what it does is it hooks someone up and it tests what they do um, from their heart rate, their sweat rate, their perspiration, their breathing rate, mm -hmm. um, when they are telling the truth. It asks them, you know, what's your name? Where do you live? Very basic questions. And then mm -hmm. it asks, they, usually a, a polygraph uh, administer asks the hard questions. So where were you last night? Um, those kind of things. And they look for differences in heart rate, in respiration rate, in perspiration rate. Because what they're doing is they're trying to see, oh, if you did this when you're telling the truth, you should also do that when you're answering these questions. And if you don't, that's most likely a lie. So what human mm -hmm. lie detectors do is they do that with their eyes, basically. So instead of testing breathing rate and heart rate, they do it uh, with body language, facial expressions, and voice tone. So in lie detection, and there's very specific techniques, I'm sort of making it very broad just so you can get an idea of what mm -hmm. it is. 
is um, you would baseline someone when you find what they do when they're telling the truth and you look for a couple of specific indicators. I, I have a baseline coding system that I teach um, physically. See what they look like when they're telling the truth and then when you get into a hot spot area you look for uh, there's 36 different red flags. And these wow. are 36 things that science have found that people statistically do when they're lying. So you wow. look for those 36 things if they're different than the baseline and that's how you do lie detection. <laughs> okay, you have to give us just a few. Just a few. We have just to. Few. Like, and a remember few. that these are not by themselves. So if you yeah. see someone do this, it doesn't necessarily mean they're lying. You have to baseline them first. So Got there's it. not one thing that means someone's lying. Um, a really easy one that's most common that I see all the time is that people will say yes, but shake their head no. So, for example, their body literally gives them away. So, um, like, you'll ask someone, you know, did you like my dinner? Oh, yeah. It was great. Oh, my God. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and you see people do this all the time. They're like, you know, so what do you think of the new guy? Yeah, he's great. Uh-huh. Right, uh -huh. and they're literally shaking their head no to it. It also works the other way where people say no but, but shake their head yes. Uh -huh. So like um, I babysit a lot for my my niece and I I've asked her you know so um, did you like whatever she always does something bad so it's like did you take a cookie out of the cookie jar um, no <laughs> right and she'll like and she'll shake her head yes even though she's saying no so um, that's like a very easy one now you have to baseline someone like for example there are some people who emphasize their words with this they just do this when they talk. Uh -huh. So for them, that would not be a red flag, right? That would discredit that red flag because during their baseline, when they're telling the truth, this is just how they emphasize their words. Yes. Right? Yes. So that's why you have to be a little a little careful. <laughs> oh, absolutely. This is just, I, I told Vanessa we got on the, uh, the Google Hangout like a few minutes beforehand. I was like, I could talk to you for hours. This is so fascinating. Um, so, okay, so um, very interesting about the lying. I, I know that I've heard things about it depends where your eyes move. Is that, like, if you're lying, your eyes tend to go in a particular direction? Is that kind of a universal thing, or is that just because um, maybe there's a baseline where you go to retrieve memory and a baseline where you go to be creative? I, I don't know. I, I heard that. I just wanted to. Yeah, that's the, the second thing you said is absolutely right. Um, so that study has not been able to been replicated. So uh -huh. I've been keeping my eye on that study for a while because it was very. It was like, like everyone heard about it. I don't know how that right. happened, but like man, those those whoever their PR person was did a great job because everyone seemed to have read it. So I've been keeping my eye on that study because I actually read the study. Very few people actually read it, and. I was like, you know, I don't know how solid this is. You know, it was yeah. it was peer reviewed, but I was like, I was keeping my eye on it, and I didn't teach it because I didn't. I wanted it to be replicated. You know, you with a study, you really want it to be replicated to make sure that it can reappear. So it was never replicated. It has not been replicated. I think maybe people have tried to replicate it, and it hasn't worked. I have found personally, as I interrogate people or as I interview people, that there is no common pattern. Um, I have not found that to be true. However, mm -hmm. I have found it to be true that if you baseline someone, for example, and I ask someone, oh, what did you have for breakfast? Mm -hmm. And they go, um, I had oatmeal. So I know that they typically access their memories from the upper left-hand corner, them mm -hmm. specifically. And then later if I say, um, were you at the scene of the crime? And they go, or you know, what were you doing on Tuesday the, at 10 a.m.? And they go, um, I was, that's a good sign. They went to the same place. But if they're like, well, I was, and they access the other side, it's usually because they're trying to make something up. So I have found a correlation for that. But again, that is just my personal experience that has not been replicated in science. So fascinating. And thank <laughs> you. I love that you actually, so many people don't read the studies or, know. you know, repli you know. I really appreciate your high standards. I think that's really important. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, so one of the things that I loved about um, so you send out 
newsletters regularly and one of the newsletters you sent out I get them and I love them Great. is uh, you do these pitch videos where people would send in their pitch and then you kind of give them feedback on their pitch and I just love the very kind of tangible pointers you gave to body language I actually like have started to integrate them um, myself oh. So one, I'll just point out a few. Maybe that will trigger some um, some ones you can share for other sure. people when they're presenting. So uh, there was one guy on, and he was introducing himself. I don't know if you can see, but I'm. He was like, I think he did something like this. Like, hi, my name is John, mm -hmm. and I really love what I do. Um, and you. So Yes. Yeah, so that is called the heart touch. Um, and so when people do this, they touch their heart. Um, we do this subconsciously when something really is dear to us. Like it literally is like holding it dear. Um, this, this area of our body for both men and women is, is very intimate. Um, you know, usually only people who you're intimate with are touching you <laughs> here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I actually mean above the heart. I don't mean like your chest. I mean like your heart area. That's actually even more intimate in some respects. Um, so what people do when I see that it's it's a very touching gesture and so when you're talking about something that you're passionate about you know if you're on a date or if you're in a pitch and it's something that really means something to you a way that you can non-verbally emphasize that is by is by saying you know so my name is Vanessa I love to teach body language right I love it, um, it it's a non-verbal emphasis for that yeah. so um, yes and I think it's great that you're gonna slowly start integrating it and always integrate authentically you know, this is not a, a gimmick or trick. I don't want you using it when you don't actually feel passionate about it because what happens when you do that is you come off as disingenuous. People can pick up on, you know, I love email. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, they can pick up on that, that fakeness. So um, it's really important that you only use it when you really mean it. Um, it's just a great tool that if you know that you really love something, that's a way to non-verbally emphasize it. Love that. Any other kind of quick body language tips while someone yeah. is presenting? Sure. So um, if you're interacting with someone back and forth, um, if you're in a pitch and you're, and you're pitching someone and they respond to you, um, one thing that you can do is research has found that triple nods, so mm. one, two, three, mm. when you do a triple nod, the other person speaks three to four times longer. So if you're talking to someone and you really want them to dig deep, you really want to get to know them, what you can do is right at the end, right when they're done speaking, so they say, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an accountant and, uh, you know, it's tax season right now, so I'm, it's been a little bit busy. You can go, hmm, one, two, three. Almost always, it's like a nonverbal cue for them to keep going. They'll be like, yeah, hopefully by April 15th it'll just be so much better. You know, have you even started your taxes? They'll actually start to go wow. <laughs> deeper for you. Um, so I use that a lot. And the, the best part is if they don't keep talking, it just makes you look engaged, right? You can say one, two, three. Yeah, I mean, tax season is rough. I couldn't even imagine being an accountant, right? So it's really easy to go into conversation. So that's one way that if you're trying to get people, especially if you're on a date, I know Valentine's Day is coming up. Yes. That's a really good one to use. Good. So let's stick to Valentine's Day as we wrap up. Sure. What are another a few more tips for, you know, it's time, it, we want to express our love. We want to really kind of get a little deeper and appreciate the people in our lives. Are there any tips that you have for, for that? Yeah, so I like to teach for romance, and I'm actually working on a, a webinar right now for dating specifically because I, mm. I have a, a body language class and I have a lie detection class, but I don't have one that's specifically on dating. So um, I'm working on that. One of the things that I like to teach is the nonverbal connection cues, so how to build connection nonverbally. And this is a really good one for men. It works for women too, but it's really good for men, is um, women like to be heard, right? Every woman, every race, we just want to feel heard. Um, and one thing that a man can do, other than just listening, um, to show non-verbally that he's really listening is you can do the non-verbal sign for I'm listening, which is a head tilt, a very, very slight head tilt. So for example, if you were to ask someone, can you hear that? They'll go, right? They almost always will tilt their head over it's because it's the non-verbal trying to hear. Um, yeah. So if you're a man and you are 
you want the woman that you're speaking with to feel like you are fully there with her and you're there and most men have less physical movement than women so women don't always know that they're listening so what you can do is instead of sitting stiffly and listening um, you can tilt your head mm. and then do the triple nods when she's done talking. It's literally like saying, Love I'm it. with you, keep going. <laughs> with you, keep going. And there's nothing better in the world of a woman for a man to say, I'm with you, keep going. <laughs> I <laughs> love listening to you. Right? That's like the best possible thing that a man <laughs> can do for a woman. So, Absolutely. Ah, uh, that is golden. Um, well, thank you so much. This has been just so eye-opening. Um, I've learned so much and I know that our viewers have as well. It was so awesome to kind of connect with you face-to-face -face via Google Hangout and I hope we can do it more often because I know you have so much more to share. And for uh, tell everyone about your courses and where they can find them. Sure. So I'm offering all of um, your listeners and readers 50% off all of my courses. So That's I have a Secrets huge. of Body Language. Yeah, I, I just am I'm grateful to be on. So um, I have a Secrets of Body Language course. That's everything you need to know about body language. Then I have How to Be a Human Lie Detector, which is how to do lie detection. And then if you're an entrepreneur, I have a course called Body Language for Entrepreneurs, which is body language in pitching, negotiating, sales, marketing, um, which is a very specific specific course. So. Um, those are the three that I have, and I'm, I welcome any suggestions if there's topics you want me to cover. I love hearing from readers, so I'm just I'm grateful to meet meet your audience. Thank you. Okay, and how do they get 50% off? So yeah, so if you go to scienceofpeople.com/discount, I have all of the 50% off coupons. Um, you know, I don't, please don't share that link with everyone. That's just for for your readers. Um, but I I appreciate it. So scienceofpeople.com/discount. Perfect. Thank you so much, Vanessa. It's been awesome. And uh, to all of our viewers, wishing you uh, a wonderful Valentine's Day full of authentic connection and love and openness and feeling seen and uh, just wishing everyone the best. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye.